Hey, so I'm Hiko Simon and Rochelle Kopp. And we are back with what must be now the fourth episode of How Not to Screw Up in Japan. And for this episode,、uh, this is a really good one. We're going to talk about what should non Japanese people do、uh, in order to be successful in Japanese companies. Good one coming up. So, I think this is one a lot of people are really interested in. There's a lot of people who want to come to Japan or work for Japanese companies, or people who are just interested in Japan and want to work for Japanese companies abroad. Right. But、um, working for Japanese companies or for a、hmm. Japanese boss as a Westerner, w- what are the things that、uh, you need to look out for? How, how can you be successful working for a Japanese boss? What are, what are the differences, do you think? Right. Well, one really big one is you shouldn't expect to have a clear job description. That、mm. Yeah. You might not even be given anything. And that's what happened to me when I joined a Japanese company.、Yeah. And I, they told me what my title is, and I got there, and I was expecting my boss is going to tell me what to do.、Mm. And after about two weeks of reading magazines, I realized if I didn't just start making suggestions or saying, can I do this, that I'd probably still be reading magazines today. I actually, yeah, I, I was seconded. Most Japanese companies I've ever joined, that's right, for the first time. Weeks to months, they literally do just sit you down with a manual and a PC and say, read and, and, and absorb the vibe and get comfortable or whatever. Right, right. And I remember even being seconded.、Uh, I was in the legal department at Fujitsu, and again, for the first month there, they said, just read the, 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 home, you know, the internal company homepage network, which has all the policies, which is, you know, is mind numbing. It's like read the phone book for a right, month. Right, exactly. Like, I'm going to put you to sleep immediately. But there is this belief that you need that. that People are, are, have just been born almost, like they need this slow time to osmosize. Right, right, right.、Something. Which, yes, that is, that's right. You get in and you expect to be given meaningful work and direction. And, right. Okay, so that's a good one, actually.、Right. So you have to expect to need to guide yourself a little bit. Right, and, exactly, and exactly. And be looking for what can I do that's useful. Yeah. And then be making suggestions. Because Japanese bosses usually expect their subordinates to come to them with ideas、mm-hmm. rather than their having to assign work. So, a lot、yeah. of time it's looking around and talking to your colleagues and saying, Can I help you with something? Yes. What can I do and be useful? Yeah. And just get in there and start being useful. And that's how you start building relationships. And there is definitely a, a, a failure pattern. It's kind of ironic because a lot of Japanese do tend to be introverted and you have to act kind of introverted in a way to be successful. But at the same time, if you just sit there and become like a shut in at your desk,、uh, you know, people <laughs> haven't given you any work, but they'll judge you as a kind of a failure after a short time. Yeah, exactly. And I have dealt with a lot of. Frustrated foreign friends who definitely come up and say, You know, that's right, I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm sitting there, this,、right. is, this is BS or whatever. Right, right. But what, what, are, what are some other tips? Well, definitely, you want to be really building strong relationships with the people you work with. And that means you know, going to lunch with them, going out after work,、uh, getting to know people.、Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's an investment. Yes, it is. It and is. You, don't have to go, you don't have to do it every night, but you do have to get to know people and become kind of part of the social group. Yep. And if you're in a larger company and they have clubs, if you can find a club that you're interested in, whether it's the Ikebana Club or the soccer club or whatever it is, that's really helpful too. Okay, but this is true anyway. Of course, you've got to get to know your co workers or whatever.、Right. So, is there anything different or special about that in Japan? I think in Japan it's, it's a more intensive process、yeah. and that you need to do it more outside of work. Yeah. Yep, yep. I, and by the way, and I've done videos before on the ups and downs of that. No question it's important.、Um, The objective of it, what you want, there, there's a concept in Japanese culture, well, it's everywhere, but it's trust, it's shinai. Right. You're trying to build a relationship of trust, that they're comfortable with you, that is, doesn't, it's not there by default. Right, it's not. And that's the difference, I think, with, for example, in, in US culture,、yeah. you start off with a pretty high level of trust、yeah. right when you come in. But、well, you presume trust. You presume trust. Or Whereas professionalism. In, right, right, exactly.、Yeah. And then over time, that, You get trusted more, but maybe actually not that much more, and there's still kind of a limit. With Japanese, you start off really low,、yeah. and there's a really long testing period.、Yeah. But then once they trust you, you go way up here, and you're incredibly trusted. So it's like in Karate Kid, where、mm-hmm. like, you just have to like, wax cars and everything, but all of a sudden you're doing the crane kick after. Like, <laughs> yeah, a, a exactly. Year, yeah. It's actually not, not <laughs> that, 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 that flow isn't, isn't unlike it. I mean, there's lots of suffering and stupidity. And I know a lot of foreign people who go into real Japanese companies in Japan.、Mm-hmm. And throw up their hands like Daniel Sun did, actually.、Uh, exactly like that. <laughs> right, no, I always recommend、It's、that movie to、crap. people.、Yeah. It is actually not a bad movie. I really、it's. like it, yeah, exactly. But、um, yes, the, the upside is, is that when you have a trust relationship, 
and it's like with the business thing as well. Mm -hmm. There is, I think maybe there's a mistake that we talked about in the previous episode about the business things, um, where maybe Western business people come to Japan and they expect to just do business, right. whereas Japanese are looking for more of a relationship. Right. They are looking to build up that kind of thing. And right. there's a huge disconnect when you're expecting to do business right away, sign the contract, shake hands, get on the private jet. Right, right. And that's not how it works. Right, right. I think, I think Western business people expect everything to have a purpose. Yes. So, um, oh. for example, I haven't had my husband with me on this trip, and um, we actually recently wrote a book together, and we had had on our calendar a dinner with the publisher. And my husband said, well, what's the purpose of this dinner? Mm. And, and from, for me, from a Japanese culture perspective, I'm like, well, it's obvious you need to get to know the guy, and, you know, and we just, we're going to be working with him, blah, blah, blah. we got to show him that you're a nice guy because he's never met you. And so for me, it was so obvious. But my husband's like, well, what's the point, right? You know, you just said, okay, the next episode after this for, for next week, I think this is going to be weekly, uh, is I want to talk about meetings with Japanese people because... Ah. That whole thing is, what is the point of this? I don't know how many times I've asked that question in yes. meetings. Uh, <laughs> meetings are really different. and these. So we're going to talk about that next week. So you want to watch that. Uh, this is an ongoing series of how not to screw up in Japan with Rochelle Koch from Japan Intercultural, Intercultural Consulting. Yes. So stay tuned for the next episode.